so uh, good afternoon so i thank professor atul kumar our chief uh, for giving us an opportunity to speak in this session and thank you so much sir and under his guidance we have been able to do a, and expand a lot of these rop services at rp center aims so i'll be talking to you about uh, uh, rop surgery so there are a lot of surgical challenges fortunately at rpc we have a very strong anesthesia team a very strong nicu backup because of which we are able to uh take these very small babies up for surgery and obviously there are a lot of challenges because there are very small eyes so i'd like to show this photo because uh this child came to us as you can see he's developing stage 4 rop in both the eyes he's developing hemorrhage in one of the eyes he could not be operated for two weeks because the child was sick when he came back for surgery this is what it looked like you can see that both the eyes are going into stage 4b rop now the traction is lifted the macula is dragged the hemorrhage is worse so what a situation was much easier to operate in the earlier two photos has now become much more difficult to operate in these situations so what you would appreciate that if you delay surgery the retina is going to pick up more height as it is going to become more peripheral this is going to make instrument access difficult making it more difficult to leave the traction moreover the trd is going to become more vascular there will be more chance of bleed inside post op bleeds complications If the lens gets involved, then there's a high chance you won't be able to do a lens sparing vitrectomy. If the macula gets involved, then obviously the outcome of the macula pucker will be there, and the vision will not be restored as much as you would like it. So, how are the results of stage four surgery? The results are pretty good if they come in time. As you can see, the left photo, there's an extensive TRD developing there. If you do a vitrectomy, all the traction will go away, and the retina will appear to be well settled after end of surgery. This is the same photo I showed you earlier. If you can see that there's extensive macular pucker now, although that entire ridge and the TRD and the hemorrhage has gone away. So if you end up with 4B, the macular outcomes might not be so good, although the traction uh, and the pull may go away. This does show you a case uh, of uh, 25G uh, lens sparing vitrectomy. You see now the cutter is relieving the traction of the band that attaches the disc to the TRD. Once you remove the central traction, then there's this vertical traction which is there, which is pulling the TRD into the middle of the vitreous, so you relieve all that traction all around wherever the traction is. You can see it's bleeding because these vessels are growing into the vitreous, so you can go ahead and do diathermy there to all these bleeding vessels once the traction is removed. Just below that, you can see that the circumferential traction we have also cut so that the two TRDs on either side of the arcades can fall back, and the circumferential traction is gone, and now a localized PVD is being done. So what I just want to show here that the three types of traction which you needed to relieve here, one is this vertical TRD which was developing here. So this we all relieve anyway, but we also need to relieve any kind of tangential or radial traction which is there, which could be in the form of PVD, could be in the form of bands, so that it doesn't close uh, towards the disc. And the third is the circumferential traction which pulls this multiple TRDs together and tries to close the ring, which also needs to be relieved in time. is another case where the, the trd is more posterior it's a zone one disease again you can see an extensive traction is there you can see how yellow the vitreous is here so once you remove all that uh, uh, vitreous all the uh, here you can see that all the fresh laser marks have been given just prior to surgery and the ga and here you can see the yellow vitreous is gone you can see the macula is also not vascularized here and uh, the pvd is being done here So this is how it looks like at four weeks. You can see the entire TRD has gone away. The eye is already lasered, and the retina has grown further. But it's important to realize that the, this case still is pretty bad and might not have this kind of outcome and could have just closed into a cauliflower shape if we had not uh, intervened. So we need to operate earlier, otherwise you can end up with unpredictable outcomes. Then obviously you have this case. If you refer this case late and you keep on praying for the disease to go away, it will not go away. And you see here, it's come behind the lens and the the Height of the TRD so much that you can't do a lens sparing surgery. Uh, Professor Dogra has uh, popularized this all nasal approach for cases with stage four B ROP. This is a screenshot from his paper uh, where he, uh, uh, you know, advocates all nasal approach, uh, especially if you've got a stage four B temporal TRD where you can go through the nasal route, and this uh, allows instrument access and you can relieve the traction, and these babies can have a good outcome. So this can be tried if you are uh, ending up with stage four B ROP. uh this is another case scenario where uh, despite laser you can see that the trd is uh, still lifting up and you can see extensive neovascularization is there so in these cases we like to give anti vegf at the end of surgery under air so that uh, further the effect of this can uh, contribute to the uh, regression of the disease and you can see in this kind of thing uh, 
Yeah, you can see the regression which you see here. This kind of clean regression is only possible when you combine anti VEGF along with surgery. In these selected cases, it's not needed for all cases. Only selected cases where you see extensive new vascularization is there because um, a laser is already there, but the traction is still continuing. So this kind of response can be obtained with the combo therapy. Many times you see bilateral cases coming in. So in these cases, it is a good idea to do bilateral surgery simultaneously. It's probably one of the few situations in ophthalmology where you can try bilateral surgery. Obviously, we treat both the eyes uh, as two separate uh, surgeries and all kinds of precautions are taken. Uh, you know, the fluids are changed, the instruments are changed, the team rewashes again. Very important to treat it as a second surgery. It also minimizes high risk exposure to GA, uh, which is a major risk factors in these babies. And obviously, parent counseling becomes very important in these babies because the parents need to understand why you are doing a bilateral surgery uh, in one sitting. Just a quick word on complications for newcomers who start into uh, ROP surgery. Uh, they sometimes have difficulty engaging the size of the eye. The size are very small. If you insert the full trocar cannula system into the eye, there's a very high chance you might end up with a break and it might hit the retina, hit the optic nerve. So it's very important uh, to realize uh, that these eyes are very small. So you don't insert the cannula in full, don't insert the trocar in full and you take it around time. If you land up with a little break, there's nothing to worry. You just go ahead and laser it very well and it'll just uh, the scarring will happen later don't do a pvd there don't try to manipulate the tissue there put oil gas that is really not needed in an attached retina many times the eyes are very small and you know the cannula can twist uh, while movement and it can lead to a lens touch so if the capsule is intact you don't need to actually go and uh, you know remove the lens just a smaller paste will stay in the periphery obviously for uh, posterior capsule tear has happened or if a cataract is developing and drop, then obviously you need to remove the lens. There's another problem which happens, supracoroidal fluid misdirection. Again, if the, you see all the problems are mostly uh, happening because of a small eye and difficulty of instrument access. So sometimes if the eye is small and your instrument gets misdirected, fluid can glow into supracoroidal space. So again, you don't need to worry, just uh, put air inside, let the fluid come out naturally from the subcon space and uh, the outcomes can be good later as well. And obviously, post-op hemorrhage and drop hemorrhage are very common complications. So don't leave bleeders in the end. If you cut too much tissue, do remember to diathermize it to reduce the IOPNC. Sometimes the machine, because of high IOP, does not let the bleeders bleed. So it's important to reduce the IOPNC if the bleeders are bleeding. Unfortunately, stage 5 ROP is a very bad uh, uh, situation to be in for the parents, the child as well. Unfortunately, we get a large number of stage 5 babies coming to RP center. Around 5 to 7 babies come every week and they are almost blind. They have never been screened. Uh, Professor Atul uh, Kumar uh, you know, published this excellent new paper of the management of vitreoretinal surgery during the COVID times and how it impacted the services uh, at RP Center and throughout India as well, and uh, how we can improve uh, during COVID management in these strategies. This to show you uh, how the management varies in stage five ROP, and there are different kinds of traction which happens. Um, uh, you know, from rich to aura, rich to rich traction, rich to lens tractions happen. So this helps us to understand how uh, surgery in stage five ROP is a little different from uh, routine vitreoretinal surgery. If we need to release all these, uh, uh, you know, attachments which are there, then only these cases can be successfully uh, uh, operated. Obviously, ultrasound is a useful tool in these. Uh, and if you have an open funnel, that's a good situation to get into. If you have an absolutely closed funnel, situation then you know it's not a good idea and the outcomes might not be as good as expected so just to show you the technique of how uh, we like to operate stage 5 ROP these are 23 g MVR going in through the clear coronal approach and through these uh, 25 g instruments uh, are put in and uh, here you can see the three instruments have gone in so it's a clear coronal approach later it allows for suture rest closure now you can see lensectomy is done all the sine k all the membranes are removing now the lens is gone so this is the retrolental membrane where an opening is being made in the retrolental tissue. So you have to be careful that you don't hit the retina, which is immediately behind this. And once you can remove uh, and uh, all this uh, tissue, then a large opening will be available. So this is a case of open, open funnel configuration. So you can see that we can safely try to open this uh, funnel. And as we continue to dissect, this tissue does tend to open up. And as you keep going deeper and deeper, you can see more and more tissue can be dissected away and the central funnel tends to open. So therefore, we believe an, a trial for stage 5 surgery should be given in these cases because there is hope that some of these cases might open up well. 
there you can see the disc is there the posterior pole is there posterior pole appears to be almost shallow attached and here you can see that uh, the wound can be hydrated and air comes in the end and you can end up with a sutureless uh, closure uh, in these eyes is another case operated and this outcome like it's not to say that stage 5 has a good prognosis stage 5 has a universally poor prognosis what i'm trying to say is that uh, surgery can be tried in stage 5 rop some of these cases do open up and if they get navigational vision then you know uh, they can you know recognize uh, that uh, there's a table here they can see shadows they can walk, go to the toilet on their own not crash while walking they can recognize the parents are in front of them and a social smile might come so all this can really change the life of the babies although the vision might not be very good so we should attempt surgery in these cases so thank you so much uh -huh.